Oh, good. Hi, I'm Oliver Grosso. I'm probably dumb for saying this, kind of, but if nobody knows who my dad is, I'm not, but I'm just gonna be surprised. But if nobody knows what my dad's name is, it's Jeff Grosso, and this is Love Letters. This is John, a friend of mine, a best friend of mine, actually. My old man's best friend. <laughs> the friend that set up my skateboard today at Jokers. <laughs> 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 so yeah, I'm Oliver Grasso, and I'm gonna go bye-bye, so. All right, so that right there, says a lot. Where would we be with our friends? I don't know. I usually have a lot to say. This is kind of a hard one trying to put it all into words, but making a best friend through skateboarding since we were kids all the way until adults, it's a trip not having them around. It's it's a, every day there's a new memory, something there. There's always something comes up that reminds me of him and our friendship. And uh, yeah, it's it's tough. It's, it's, it's tough to lose someone that close to you and have life still make sense, you know? So I came into this world like a puzzled panther, Darby Crash. I was born in 1968. I quickly moved to Arcadia, California. I don't know nothing about Hawaii. I saw Jaws way too young, I do not surf. <laughs> So I was pretty much a train wreck straight out of the gate, but somebody gave me a skateboard mag. I fell in love with the colors. There was an ad at Jerry Valdez doing a tell tap at Oxnard, and there were shoes lined up across the coping, and they were all different colors. And I thought to myself, fucking A right. <laughs> It was 1981, all right? There was about 200 people involved in skateboarding, worldwide. That's how fucking pathetic it was. I knew almost every one of them. I still do. When we were little and we were a fad, like a yo-yo or a fucking hula hoop or some bullshit, right? And they'd build massive skate parks everywhere and then they'd all go out of business and nobody would do it. And I didn't care because fucking TA had four different colored wheels and I was gonna be him. You know, that's all I wanted. I'd sell my soul if I was a spiritual man. <laughs> but unfortunately, we were freaks, we were outcasts. We got beat up at school. But we believed in the toy, man. The toy was everything. I would give up my fucking life for skateboarding.
This is the legend of skateboarding, too. <laughs> Eric Nash. He could tuck his knee on the front side air. Tuck knee. I don't know what to say. You go on. <laughs> I like your style. Thank you for that great intro, Oliver. Eric Nash from Arcadia, California, the city of action, is best known for his pumpkin head graphics and his mastery of lip tricks. He is also a skater that has pets. My dad started skateboarding with the skate buddy, Eric Nash, right here, sitting right next there to me. There you go. When did you start skateboarding? That's a good question. About 1977. 19? I was about nine years old. About a year or two before I met your dad. I moved to Arcadia, and my first day of elementary school, I walked into my homeroom class, um, and Eric was in there, and he was wearing a Sim Snake shirt, and he had a broken wrist. When he got there, I had a cast my arm, and uh, and he was stoked. I had a skateboard shirt on, and he was like, dude. You skate? And he was like, yeah, you? And I was like, yeah, and that was it. You became friends? We became friends skate based buddies. on that. Yeah, skate buddies. Who was sponsored first? As far as I remember, was your dad it was sponsored by Veriflex first. I, got, I was like three or four days later by GNS. I wouldn't have wanted to grow up with anybody else. He fucking kicked ass. I think the thing that's really interesting with Jeff's life is it's, it's this, you know, you're born and you start to think, well, you know, what do I want to do? And there's Jeff Grasso from Arcadia and he falls in love with skateboarding and finds Friends like Neil Blender, and John Lucero, and Lance Mountain get sponsored by Paul Peralta. Has a skateboard career, probably made some all right money that he spent very quickly, and then it kind of just all went away. But then he was able to come back and kind of do it all over again. I think that's pretty beautiful. Hey, man. Hey. Last love letter, last episode, or dedicated to Grasso. I don't know what the fuck this is, but it's some shit I gotta say about this man. I love going to Six Stair and just talking shit with, with fucking Jeff, man. It's all talking shit, man. Yep. This sucks, that sucks, never no hard feelings, just fucking skate rats talking shit in a fucking garage, man. If you're a fucking skate coach, you can go fuck yourself, because that shit's for free. That's what you do with friends. Like, you teach each other how to do a back D. What do you think? He's right. Jeff Grasso, R.I.P. forever. Love you, Jeff. Fuck yeah. Fireball assault on your eardrum. One of my favorite Grasso memories was in 2006, I somehow convinced him and Lance to go on a trip to Oregon with me, John Rattray, Stu Graham, and Keegan Sauter. What struck me about Jeff was how serious he took everything. He wasn't some old guy swaggering in, telling everyone how they're doing it wrong. He was actually super stoked and humbled to be included with this group of younger guys. And uh, he was extremely reverent about the parks that we were going to, which were pretty new at the time. He'd show up and get out of the van and like slowly walk the perimeter, eyeballing the coping, maybe putting a hand down, imagining where he would do his hand plants. For me, getting to watch him flap over this Andrecht on the extension at Reedsport, uh, it was like living in a magazine of my childhood. It was incredible. And he would just be like, he took it so seriously. It was like a science to him. この<音楽><音楽> 
私の滑りを見ていてくれてたみたいで、しかも私の好きなクレールスライドを褒めてくれたことがすごく嬉しくて大好きになりました。It was right before one of the ASPOs, and Nash and I were skating Pomona Pipe and Pool all the time. And you showed up with an entourage of punker chicks and weirdo dudes, and they were all calling you Sa. And you had like a big pompadour. Yeah, Sa. That's that my old name for it because like all my punker friends call me SA, they just call me Sa. And funny. you walked in, and Eric was the one that recognized you. I didn't recognize you. Eric was like, That's Steve Alba. That's Steve Alba. You had purple creepers on. We were so blown away that, like, you just walked into the park, no pads on, and started skating. Like, like he didn't pay, he didn't wear pads, he's wearing purple creepers. And you just dropped in, aired the channel, and left. <laughs> That, what year is that? Probably like 80. 81, yeah, 80, probably right 81. Yeah. We were little, little kids and we were just completely fucking dumbfounded. Everyone has stoke on skateboarding. Everyone wants stoke. And when you can find buddies that are just stoking together, then it just, it pours out and people are like, they want to feel it too. And it's, that's why skateboarding's rad. Okay, let's go. And I think Jeff, as he, he found out as he's doing this, like, there's people all over the world that love this the same way, but their stories are different. Selling fucking shoes, it's not about selling skateboards. It's not about fucking sugar water. It's not about anything that anybody thinks that it's about. It's about a couple of kids being like-minded, finding one another, and fucking walking out their front door and exploring the world around them and how they view it, right? Like, there it is. And, and having fun. Fuck, whatever. Go skateboarding. Fuck this. This entire season, you've been cheering from the sidelines louder than anybody from the deck when the women drop in. Was it about, what is it about this crew that we have at Vance Park Series that gets you so fired up? We like to think that we're so progressive in skateboarding, and you know we were a little late to the show with the girls, and so it's nice to see them catching up and getting their due. You know, it wasn't more than a handful of years ago that. We couldn't even get them flowed boards and shoes and stuff, let alone something like having a whole ecosystem for them to flourish in. Patty. Grasso set me free. I have seen your lamp, and it's too big, too big for me. Ah, 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 backside air. You know, Holmes was there, and he clapped for me. He. Home's trap for me. Ah, ah, ah. Smith goes across the top. I hung up, then flopped to the bottom now. It's usually the DIY parks that are much more loved, uh, you know, and cherished than just some regular shitty municipal skate park that that the city whipped together for you because it's blood sweat and tears from the local skaters that build it yo pizza box here checking the levels in chicago illinois and between the grasso grant and a couple other local donors we raised over fourteen hundred dollars in the matter of a couple days this is going to be the summer of concrete thank you grasso thank you skateboarding cheers you're in Chicago, Illinois, Pilsen, part of Chicago, Pilsen DIY, you can't fucking tell. This is the only one place in Chicago that has a DIY like this. I'm not fronting, not bullshitting, ask anybody in this fucking city. This is, this is like one of a kind. We've been doing this for like three plus years, going on four. We had to learn, it's a, it's a fucking long process, brutal. Backbreaking, but we love it. We do it for the love. We do it for our community, skate community, and 
Working with Jeff was different because almost all of his boards were one-offs. They weren't part of a series, and so he always wanted there to be this independent idea, and he always wanted to set a strong message. And he'd been around some homophobia at skate parks and had been overhearing stuff that was pissing him off, and it just felt very non-inclusive to him. He said, hey, Todd, I want to do, do a graphic that's two men who are very clearly in love because I can't think of a skateboard graphic that's ever done that. Uh, there's a lot that I loved about Jeff. Um, one of the things I love the most is as skateboarding has changed over the years, I always loved his passion and desire to help steer it towards the ideas and the approach that so many of us feel skateboarding is. Jeff was an original punk rocker, and uh, he punk rocked hard. Um, when he did a run, especially in a contest, he, anywhere he skated, he was a very technical skater, and he was really adamant about each trick being perfect. I mean, he had to have his toe in the right place and his board tweaked just right. Um, he was a skateboarding perfectionist. One thing to add, I think, in terms of influence of skaters and pro skaters, from Jeff and I's perspective at least, and I'm speaking on behalf of Jeff here, you know, John and Lance and Neil and Richard Armijo, all these locals who are older than us, and so we're very influenced by what these older guys had said. You know, John, I think, one time had a Santa Cruz board, and, Steve, and he was preaching how great Steve Olson was. I mean, I think within like two days, Jeff and I went out and bought a Santa Cruz checkerboard Steve Olson, 169 Indies and Blood Revolvers. Blood Revolvers were like roller skating wheels. Why on earth would we ever buy roller skating wheels? But like John had said, oh, go, these are cool wheels. These are the wheels to ride. And we showed up at the session. We all both had the same exact board. I, I was so mad, too. <laughs> I heard that. What are we getting into? Oh, no. Some, shoot some love to love letters. <laughs> Much love to Love Letters, Jeff Grosso, and all the fam. Hey, it's Ninja Aspi here. Well, I first saw Jeff Grosso here in Florianópolis when we had that contest, Red Bull Skate Generation, and I was starting at skateboarding, and Jeff was killing it. And after the contest, I asked for, for a picture we took, and he was wearing this hat. It's a very special hat for me. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff, for everything. We miss you, we love you, and thanks for everything you did to skateboarding. This one is for Grosso. Hello friends of the letters, greetings from Brooklyn, New York. Whenever I'm rolling through the neighborhood, I'm sure to swerve in here and stand on a couple pivots. And every time, every single time, I hear Jeff in my head telling me, telling you, telling everyone, no one does pivots like Neil Blender. Nobody does pivots like Neil. No one. No one ever is going to. You're going to think you do. You don't. Thank you, Jeff Grasso, for everything you did for skateboarding, the love you gave back to it, and the mischievous attitude that personifies what skateboarding is for me. Grasso's love letters is one of the most non-bullshit things skating has going for it right now. And to hear his perspective and what he thinks is the good stuff and the dorky stuff that he likes to rip apart in a great way. If you're going like this and reaching between your legs to grab your bean plant, stop.
and just don't ever do them ever again. You've lost the fucking privilege. What I loved most about Jeff was basically his transparency, man. Like he just, I don't know, whatever he was feeling or like his emotions at the time or like what he thought about somebody or something else, like he would just say it straight up. Fuck you. You hear me? Huh? What I loved about Jeff Crosso the most was his honesty. Jeff always spoke out his mind, the way he saw things and the way he felt about it. I am who I am. I'm an old, washed up, vert fucking pro from 1986. Uh, you know, pure and simple. The sickest thing about Jeff was that he was always so passionate about skateboarding. Half the kids at street skate now don't know who Mark Gonzalez is. If you're a kid today and, and you're all about street skating and stuff and you don't know who Mark Gonzalez is, then you need to do some fucking homework. A primeira vez que eu encontrei o Jeff foi em 2014, num campeonato na casa do Pedro. E aquele dia foi um dia especial para mim. Mas a história mais especial foi aquele dia no carro, em que eu resolvi sair do armário para aqueles caras que eu não conhecia, para aquela lenda de skate que estava sentado do meu lado, que eu não vi mal. Eu sabia que ele não ia me julgar, que ele não ia falar assim. Sai fora daqui, viado, qualquer coisa assim. E eu acho que depois de ter falado pra ele, toda vez que eu encontrava ele, ele fazia questão de me dar um abraço, me agradecer e dizer que me amava por eu ser um cara verdadeiro com ele. E isso é muito especial vindo de um cara com ele. Grosso knew that I had my own little clothing company called Pickpocket, where I'd like cut up old shirts and sold him onto new stuff to kind of give him a second life. And he hit me up one day saying he had a bunch of shirts to go through. It's kind of where I got the, the Grasso head from. So I went up to his house and he invited me in. We went through every shirt he's ever had. It was just a closet full of shirts, the floor and bed just covered in shirts. Don't even know how he slept in there. Why do I hold on to so many t-shirts? Because I'm a hoarder. It's some holdover from when I was a teenager and I first got free gear for skateboarding. After he passed away, the remaining stuff that I had that I was going to sell, I just gave some shirts back to Oliver and close friends of Jeff. T-shirts are the best, man. Yeah, you know, this is like a good t-shirt. The thing or things that I love most about Jeff was that he was just so unapologetically himself. Yeah, so. It's really hard for me to say what I most loved about Jeff, but um, what gets a lot of my attention was the passion he, he had for skateboarding. We need to remember that skateboarding is the best fucking thing on earth. And it hurts me to see it fucking sold down the river for fucking pennies on the dollar. It hurts me, physically makes me ill. I'm in my first hotel room after quarantining for over a year and I'm at a contest, which is super weird. And I feel like now that I'm back out here in the wild, <laughs> I'm reminded why Jeff was such a good friend. Now how am I? Beautiful. We just wanted to sit down with you and um, and celebrate your awesomeness. And it was because in times like these when it is super weird and I feel far away that he was always there to text and not feel so far away. He wasn't a perfect dude, like he was very open about like his personal failings. I am full of shit. <laughs> this is Nathan and Malachi. Malachi. And Noah. Saying why you impacted us so much and we're claiming it's because your confidence shined through your insecurities and we love that. So shine on. It's, it's his overconfidence. It lets him do anything he can do. That. My overconfidence, it's my insecurity <laughs> in trying to cover up my insecurity. Well, you do well. If you give a kid a skateboard and there's the front door of your house, What's right outside the door of your house? Fucking curbs. Curbs and and chaos. And life is kind of like curbs, right? You have life of skateboarding is. That's right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you go down, but then you get back up. 
That's true. That's right. Mm -hmm. So life is kind of like a big red curb. Mm-hmm. Back in 98, I was crashing under the pool table in the mandolin department at John's house. And some Sundays, Jeff would come over, he'd pick me up to go skate Lorman's. After the one session, I told him I was broke. I needed some food money. And he suggested we cruise by the HB park, try to sling some boards. But we got there, it was packed. Every time he'd sell a board, he'd look over and yell, moving wood. It ended up, he pawned everything he had. I didn't sell shit. On the way back to John's, he stopped at an In-N-Out, bought me a burger. Besides Jeff being a solid, hilarious, inspirational dude, that man could move some wood. What's up, dudes? This is a, a love letter to Jeff Grosso that I wrote. This is my love letter to you. But you aren't here to read it. You stood on one arm, taller than most men on two feet. We stared, awestruck, awaiting your reentry back to Earth. But all we saw was a middle finger as an eagle flew away. Much love. If you're truly a skate nerd, captions are everything. Captions are just merely just directions to the page. It's like word for word. Did you write did you write the roast beef caption? No. No, no, no. That was and I mean <laughs> We actually yeah, went through this again. I, it's, in, it's in your interview. Yeah, I, get, I get fucking harassed all the time. Like, have you come up with an... I go, I didn't come up with a name. It's from a <laughs> caption in Thrasher. I don't even think the caption is to a Grasso photo. It is, it is, it, it is. is. I'll show you the photo. Hey, MRZ here. Let me share some photos. Jeffrey Blaine Grasso. A lot of different sessions. Don't even know where to begin. was our supreme bootleg t-shirt. That was Jeff's idea. No, no, that one was a fun one. You know, whatever session, wherever we were going to skate, it was always, the main thing was, all right, where are we gonna eat? Where are we gonna eat? And man, Jeff could eat. There's no doubt about it. But to put it down. This one kind of sums that up. Yep. Miss you, my friend. Much love. A lot of great memories. The hardest thing in skating is, is getting into that zone where you can turn this shit. This is the big problem. Uh, you know, my head is always the fucking problem. Like you just kind of shut down and you get into this, this kind of place where there's, there's just you and it. And, and that's the spot I feel most comfortable in. I can't, I, you can't stay there is the problem. Like any good drug, you can't stay high. You can't stay there. Probably our first time to Del Mar was probably like 1983, when I was like 10. And then 84, we went to this contest and there was this dude that we'd seen there before, but we didn't know who he was. He was the dude in the green helmet and it was Jeff Grosso. These are some of the first times we shot photos of Jeff. So here's another one from 84. This is one of Jeff's backset airs. This is a normal one, but we would always try to capture this backset air that he would do. He'd be completely beneath his board. This one's insane. This one is Jeff doing his favorite trick, the sad plant. You can see Fedge in the background just fucking stoked. Here's the one-footed invert. Jeff Hartzell back there behind Jeff's wheels. And I am not that kid with the fist up, although I wish I was. So yeah, these are the first years of my brother and I seeing Jeff skate. Just wanted to share that with you. I, I would I would think like just talking about Jeff's influence and love letters and everything, 
you know, I think one really cool element of, of the of Jeff's whole communication skills yeah. is is when he when he passed away, you looked on social media and you had all these pros and, and friends talking about saying things about how great he was. But then you saw those same stories coming from people who had just met him randomly at the skate park and he took the time out of his day or session to go talk to them and learn about them. And I mean, that's such a huge, important, you know, description of how much of an influence he had. It's love letters. Hey, what's up? We're the Fast Plants and we're here because we love Jeff Grosso just like you love Jeff Grosso. This is the first set list we ever wrote out nine years ago. Second song we ever played. We played hundreds of times since all over the country. And we figured it was time to update time to give it give it the due it deserves give it a little rewrite and give it to you guys because um jeff gave so much up One thing that's very missing in the conversation and that I've noticed um, since Jeff's passing is there's not a lot of conversation of how incredibly good skateboarder he was. And he was incredibly good at picking and choosing what to do and making sure that if you did it, you did it for a reason. It's got it constantly feel better or done better so you spend more time bailing on it than ever making it. These are going to be my last words because okay. I'm going to go on and skate, it. but yeah, I was so grateful to have my dad in this like world, like I was so grateful for him to be my dad. <laughs> More! Because my dad was made of skateboarding, that's what he was, skateboarding. Like all I ever wanted to do was ride skateboards and talk about skateboards and love skateboards. Uh, you know, and skateboarders. We're going to watch you grow up and we're going to remember your pops and we're going to remember our friend for the rest of our lives because of you. Um, we're going to keep telling you stories all the time about your dad and we'll keep filling you in on all the stuff. And then you're going to keep telling us more stories too. Did he ever tell you he was called Blockhead? Yeah, oh, another, another, <laughs> um, another word for him is Big Pink. <laughs> Big Pink. <laughs> And no. um, I'm going to leave. This is my last part for the love letters. And I love you guys. And I'm going to um, toss you on to these reds.